So hello and welcome to the 2021 Harvard Pre-College Program webinar for admitted students. On behalf of the Harvard Summer School, I would like to congratulate you on your admission to the Harvard Pre-College Program. We are so excited to welcome you in our 150th anniversary year. If there are parents or guardians watching and listening to this webinar, please note this is intended for students who have already been accepted to the pre-college program. So we'll be speaking directly to them, directly to you students. We're going to start by introducing ourselves. My name is Dr. Jacqueline Newcomb, and I'm the director of the Harvard pre-college program. Hello, everybody. Very happy to be here with you all. My name is Samantha Gordon, and I am the assistant director for the Harvard pre-college program. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Corbett and I'm the high school programs coordinator and also very happy to be here with you all. Thank you. So here's a brief agenda of what we're going to be covering for the next 30 minutes or so. Please note that there will be a question and answer section at the end of the presentation and feel free to write down any questions that you may have, see if we answer them throughout the presentation. And if for some reason we don't, then please submit any unanswered questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Ms. Corbett will compile the questions and we'll try to answer as many as possible during this session. We are recording the webinar and we will send it out as soon as possible, as well as the answers to any questions we may not have had time to answer tonight. So let's get started with a brief poll. As you can see, we have applicants from 110 countries and 51 US states and territories. We would like to know where you will be joining from this summer. So please refer to the maps on the screen as you enter your poll response. Let's give it a few more minutes. I see lots of people have answered. We have over 400 people in this in this webinar this evening. So we're almost at a, we're at about 85% responses. So we'll just give it one more minute, see if everybody can get their votes in. Oh, so close. We're at, we're at 93%. I think that's pretty close enough. Why don't we end that poll and see what the results are? So as you can see, you, uh, we have students from all over the world who'll be joining us this summer. While you are completing the poll, or actually, um, as you've completed the poll, I wanna remind you that all of our courses and events will be held virtually this summer. The times are all listed on our course website in Eastern Daylight Time. So be sure to consider the time difference for your own time zone when selecting courses and co-curricular events. As you can see from the poll responses, we have students who will be taking their courses remotely from all over the world. Of course, some students are not joining us this evening due to the time difference. So again, keep that in mind when you're selecting your schedules. I'm now going to pass things off to Ms. Corbett. Thank you, Dr. Newcomb. To help each of you get excited to join us virtually this summer, our pre-college staff created some digital swag for you to use. You can print out the photo on the right or use the photo on the left as an Instagram story template. You can use the template using hashtag Harvard Summer 2021. We would love to see you share your excitement with your friends and family, and if you use the hashtag, you could be featured on the Harvard Summer School social media accounts. Ms. Gordon will now talk to you about a typical day. So those that participate in the pre-college program have a full and sometimes long day. You will be in class three hours a day, Monday through Friday, and expect approximately two to four hours of homework each day. Missing a class and or being late will lead to a final grade of requirements not met. So make sure that you are you make it to class on time, you're prepared, alert, and ready to engage. The pre-college co-curricular activities are a place for you to learn new skills and get to know others in the program. You will be assigned your community engagement sessions and then select virtual events that fit into your schedule to attend throughout your two weeks with us. So now we have another poll for you. And so um, on this next slide, we are going to ask you um, 
about what your uh, most ex uh, what topic uh, you're most excited for in terms of our courses. And so, as you can see, um, speech writing and literature, psychology, medicine, and public health, law, politics, philosophy, and history, business and leadership, race, gender, and ethics, and science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, STEAM. So please take a minute to just quickly let us know what you're most excited, what most interests you. We can have maybe a little hint as to what classes are going to fill up or what have already filled up, which is very exciting. Wonderful. We have about 85% of you. This is very exciting. Okay. The results are going to be shared with you very shortly. We're, yep, there we go. All right. So our number one, psychology, medicine, and public health. Um, so, uh, so excited that you all are excited for all of our different course subjects. And so now, now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Newcomb to tell you more about our courses. Thank you very much. Whether you take evolution and paleobiology research methods or introduction to college writing, you will be challenged both inside and outside of the classroom. In each three hour course, you can expect a combination of lectures, small and large group discussions and student presentations. A physics, math or computer science course may include a problem set for homework that needs to be worked on over several days. If you're taking a government philosophy speech or writing course, your final project may include several drafts or sections written over a week's time. Course readings come from scholarly peer-reviewed journal art articles, textbooks, and in some cases, recent news. Remember, you may only take one course in each two-week session. If you're interested in more than one course, you can attend two or even all three sessions. Please note that if you're on the wait list for a course, you should strongly consider dropping that and registering for a course with an open space. That's the only way you can guarantee yourself to be part of our program this summer. To avoid being dropped from all your courses, be sure to pay your program fee and check your schedule. You should drop any extra courses or wait lists before the payment deadline on April 15th. If you have a balance due after the payment deadline, then unfortunately our system automatically drops you from all of your courses. Our courses cover nearly a semester worth of work and worth of content in just two weeks. The pre-college program focuses on learning for learning's sake. So we do not use letter grades. Rather, you receive an AR if you meet all requirements or an NM if you do not. Plus you receive a written evaluation from your instructor. You can also request a Harvard transcript to use as part of your college application. Harvard Summer School expectations for online behavior are listed in our student handbook on our website. I'll highlight a few of them here for you tonight. Be an active member of our community by attending required and optional events and class on time with your cameras on. Do not record or post anything from online courses or events. To respect the privacy of our students in accordance with FERPA, which is the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, and maintain the integrity of our academic experience. If family members or others are viewing or listening in, instructors or staff may remove you from the online session. Remember, we do require you to have your camera on during each class and event. If you have concerns about your connection or the technology that we'll be using, please review the guidelines on our website and be in touch with our online support team in advance. Ms. Gordon will now talk about academic student support. So we have many resources and staff to assist you during the program. The first I'm going to highlight are our resident directors. Our resident directors, also referred to as RDs, are full-time professional staff members who will meet with you three times throughout your session. Resident directors are selected through the Association of College and University Housing Officers International, known as QI, uh, the Housing Internship Program, a prestigious and competitive internship in Student Affairs and Higher Education Administration. Our resident directors serve as your contact throughout the program for any questions or concerns you may have. They will provide you with opportunities to get to know your fellow students and help you navigate the co-curricular programming that we offer. In addition, there is the Zoom room with on-call RDs available weekdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. during your session. 
On the weekends, our Ds also check and respond to any emails that come in so you can be assured that you will have support throughout your full two weeks. And now I'll turn it over to Ms. Corbett to tell you more about our academic resources. Thank you. In terms of academics, you may not be used to asking for help. However, in this program, it is a sign of strength to know when to reach out for support. This may be your first experience taking college level coursework, and we have a few support systems in place to help you have a successful two weeks. We offer virtual pre-college tutoring where you can work in a group or one-on-one -on -one with a current Harvard College student who has experience in a wide variety of coursework. Virtual study sessions are also held twice a week by the same pre-college tutors in a Zoom room. You can start requesting tutoring assistance through your instructor or your RD starting on the very first day of your course. The Harvard Writing Center is also a resource that our students have access to during their session. For courses that have teaching assistance, the TIs often hold extra virtual study sessions or office hours as well. We hope that you will be healthy and well during your time here. But if you do need academic accommodations due to a disabling condition, please reach out to the Office of Accessibility Services so that you can begin the process of registration. This includes supports for students with physical, emotional, or learning disabilities. Now we are going to discuss required actions that you will need to take to be ready for your first day of class. Thanks, Ms. Corbett. If you haven't already replied to our application offer of admission, please accept your place in the application portal. You'll see on the, on the slide in front of you, um, well, the previous slide, um, our calendar, and you should also check our calendar for important dates. Once you reply yes to our, okay, we're going forward again. Sorry about that. All right, once you reply yes to our offer, then you'll be able to receive an email from us that lists all the required actions, including how to access our MyDCE portal. Next slide, please. There's a profile section in the MyDCE in the upper right corner of the screen to update your email address. This is very important, especially if the email address you applied with is not your own. As a reminder, due to the FERPA guidelines I discussed earlier, we cannot communicate or share information with parents, legal guardians, family members, or anyone else on your behalf. So be sure that the email address that we have on file is actually yours, your student email address. You will also submit the pre-registration information required to register for courses within MyDCE. After you update your biological information and emergency contacts, you'll be able to click on the course registration link in the quick link section right under your photo. Once you finish pre-registration, you will enter another system called online services to register for your course. As you can see, here's a listing of what it looked like last year, um, but it's pretty similar this year as well. All pre-college program courses have limited enrollment, which means there's a cap on the number of seats in each section, typically 12 to 18 students. When choosing a course, you can see the status indicating if it's available. It'll be labeled limited if there are still spots. Filling, which means there's only a few spaces left. At waitlist, if there's no space left and you want to put yourself on a waitlist for a course, or closed, which means all the spaces, including the waitlist, are full. Please note you can only be registered or on the waitlist for one course per session. If you forget what else you need to do within online services, you can select the Check My Status button on the main menu, and you'll be able to view a copy of the email we sent you, including the next required actions. Once you've selected your courses, you'll be able to submit full payment for the program fee of $3,200 for each session that you're attending. Please do this no later than April 15th. This program fee includes the cost of your course and all activities. You can view your account, pay your balance, or set up an authorized user in the student finance portal. You may want to choose a parent or guardian or a third, par third party who's supporting you financially as your authorized user. 
They will then have access to view your financial account and make a payment for you. Please note, you must pay for all courses for which you have registered or placed yourself on the course waitlist prior to the payment deadline. If you plan on only attending one course, please drop yourself from all other courses and waitlists prior to the payment deadline. Harvard Summer School reserves the right to remove you from the courses for non-payment. And if you have not registered for any courses by April 15th, we're going to assume that you will not be attending and we will withdraw you. If you do change your mind after that time, just quickly send us an email and we'll be able to reinstate your admission. You'll receive various emails from other departments reminding you about specific things to do before the program begins. Be sure to claim your Harvard key, which gives you access to electronic resources at Harvard, including our library and Canvas, the course learning management system. In Canvas, you'll be able to view your course syllabus in early May. During your course, your instructor may put your readings and assignments here, and you will also launch your course Zoom room from Canvas. Ms. Gordon's now going to explain additional pieces needed to prepare for your session. All students are also required to complete Title IX online training. The training includes your rights and responsibilities to address, report, and prevent sexual misconduct, and this will help maintain a respectful learning environment. All right, so now as you can see on the screen, we have another poll for you. So we offer a series of programs called Academic Exploration, which I'll explain very shortly. So you'll see five of our Academic Exploration events. These are five actual events we will be having this summer. Uh, please select which event you're most interested in. Uh, these are just five out of over 20 per session that you will have access to attend. And so I'm watching the numbers go up right now. This is very helpful for me to know what you're all interested in. Um, but just to read out the different programs, we have Anatomy of a Clinical Study, How Researchers Learn About the World, Navigating the 21st Century Gender Landscape, The Beautiful Game, How Soccer Explains the World, Criminal Moneymakers, The Economics of Organized Crime, and U.S. Immigration, Fact versus Fiction. All right, we have about 88% of you and I can tell you right now in the lead, we have the criminal money makers, the economics of organized crime. All right, and I, and we'll close the poll. All right, so as you can see, criminal money makers was one of our, our top uh, most interested events, um, but I'm also happy to see the numbers for all the other ones. So anatomy of clinical study, that's right up there. So I hope you all look forward to these and you'll have uh, the opportunity to sign up for these and many more during your session. So now, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about our co-curricular events on the next slide. So our co-curricular events are robust and created with your interest and development in mind. You are required to attend and engage in at least one of those academic exploration events that we just mentioned, the one, a one college readiness event, as well as three community engagement meetings with the resident directors over the course of the program. Attending social events and the mission panels are optional, but highly encouraged. So, like I said, we offer our academic exploration programs, which are lectures and discussions with Harvard scholars to give you a taste of the questions that drive various academic disciplines. We offer the college readiness workshops to help you develop and practice critical academic skills to support transition and success in college. You will have the opportunity to sign up for social activities hosted by the Harvard Summer School Student Activities Office. Such events have included Harvard trivia, movie nights, and virtual tours of local museums. We offer virtual admission sessions such as online panel presentations, some by Harvard staff and others in cooperation with highly selective universities. And lastly, we have those community engagement sessions with your resident directors. You will be assigned to a group in time based on your class schedule and what time zone you're in. And you'll stay with that group throughout the two weeks and really develop strong bonds with one another. So on our next slide, you will see a little video um, of our pre-college co-curricular website, uh, which is the hub for the co-curricular and social programs throughout the summer. So if we can press play on the, the screen share, uh, prior to your session, you all will be emailed information uh, on how and where to sign up for those activities. Um, it is important that you press the correct session you're attending when reviewing the and registering for events. Um, and it looks like the video is not playing, but that's okay. You all can go visit the website. You can see it in the uh, search bar at the top. Um, you will have the opportunity on this website 
to read about those various lectures, workshops, and admissions events um, that we offer. We offer two different types of, um, of view types on the website as well, so you'll be able to see a calendar and an accordion style to view the different options. The activity signups are on a first come first serve basis. You will receive an email about 10 days before each session with the sign up information and you will sign up for the events based on your class schedule. All events take place in Eastern Standard Time and they are all virtually. We make sure that there are a variety of times to accommodate various time zones. And additionally, you will have the opportunity to sign up for extra events that have space. And so links for those extra events will be available on this website during your first few days of the program. So now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Corbett to talk about our orientation program. Thank you. There will be a student and family orientation on the Sunday before each session. Orientation is required for students and is optional for additional family members. This will take place at 1030 AM Eastern time and a link to the family orientation will be emailed to you a few days before the start of your session. Your first community engagement session with RDs will also take place on the same day. You will receive an email closer to the start of your session with your assigned RD and community engagement meeting times. Please note, some community engagement sessions may be scheduled before the family orientation to help with varying time zones. The three of us will also be available to chat with you and answer any questions that you may have in the on-call Zoom room following each family orientation. On behalf of the Harvard Summer School, I would like to congratulate you once again on your admission to the Harvard Pre-College Program. You will, we will now transition to our question and answer portion. If you have any questions that haven't already been answered as part of this presentation, please enter them in the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We are not using the chat function tonight. We also invite you to meet our staff at the Association for Pre-College Program Directors Virtual Summer Opportunities Fair this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The link has just been added to the chat for you to see. If you do want to sign up to go to that event, and then you will have one chance to chat with one of our staff one-on-one. -on -one. All right, Ms. Corbett, please select some questions for us to answer. Awesome. We do have a lot of good questions coming in. Um, so the first question I have to ask is, what happens if I do not accept my offer of admission before the payment deadline? That's a great question. So we, we do have, we've accepted um, about 75 to 80% of the students who can fill our program at this point. We're still accepting late applications through May 3rd. Um, and the vast majority of the students who we have accepted have already accepted their offer, but they haven't all registered. We ask that students who were admitted during the early or the regular admission period, which means that they re um, received their offer of admission before March 31st. If you received your offer by March 31st, we ask that you accept your offer, choose a course, or put yourself on a wait list and pay for at least one of those um, options. If you're not, if you are on the wait list for one course and registered in another and you only pay for one, the system's not going to know which one you've paid for. They're going to drop you from everything. So it's really important that you kind of clean up your record and pay for the specific course you're interested in staying in. Um, we only have five seats in each of our wait lists because typically we exhaust our wait list for every course. So um, if you are on the wait list, I would would urge you to pay for that space if you know that is the only course you really want to take because um, if somebody else who has a seat in the course doesn't pay you will get their spot on the payment deadline day um, if you do not do any of the steps i've just mentioned then the day after the payment deadline we're going to assume that you are no longer interested in attending and we're going to withdraw you from the program just so that we don't keep emailing you to remind you to do things um, but like I said earlier in the webinar, if you do change your mind, you can simply send us an email and we can reinstate your admission so that you can apply. 
And once again, I ask that you use the question and answer to send us any questions that you have for this evening. And if we don't get to answer all of them, then Ms. Corbett and um, another member of our staff will compile the answers and email those out to you with a copy of this webinar. Thank you for answering that. Okay, so our next question that we have is, I have been accepted to another program. Can I do both at the same time? I think it would be extraordinarily challenging to do both programs at the same time. In fact, last year we had one or two students who thought it would be okay to even have a part-time job during our program and ended up not passing their program um, because they just didn't have the time or the uh, energy to put in as much as they needed to. If we had been a residential program, like we would be in a non-COVID year, um, we don't allow students to do anything else during the two weeks. I understand that you'll be taking your courses from home, so it may be easy for you to feel comfortable doing more than one thing, but I do recommend that you only do the pre-college program during this two-week session. You will, as um, Ms. Gordon explained in a typical day, you will be in class for three hours with your cameras on. They're very interactive classes. Our largest class right now has 18 students in it. So you will be on camera and interacting throughout the whole three hours. Um, and then you will have two to four hours of homework after every class, including the weekends. Plus, as Ms. Gordon explained, we expect you to be involved in your community engagement sessions, which meet three times over the two weeks, and the other activities that we have, um, the required activities for academic exploration and college readiness, and then the optional social and virtual admission um, virtual admission activities. So you will be quite busy, and I would hope that, you know, I, I saw a few questions in the chat about how, how, you know, if this is non-credit, why is there a grade? There is still a pass-fail grade and a written evaluation by your instructor, which typically students use as supplemental material for their college app. You also do receive uh, a Harvard transcript if you select, you know, you can go into our portal and request an official Harvard transcript with your non-credit grade. So even though it's non-credit, it is still a highly selective program that admissions officers will look at um, as part of your application. So you don't really want to fail your non-credit class from Harvard because you were really busy trying to do two things at once. Awesome. Um, I see we have a lot of questions coming in asking to re-clarify Harvard Key. Where do they access it? All of uh, that. There's several. Sure. Of that's a great question. So once you register for your course um, and you submit your payment, you will get an email from our office of the registrar at Harvard asking you to claim your Harvard key. It's, it's very different than the, than the DCE key that you used in my DCE, or, and it's also different from maybe your application portal. Uh, login. So you will get your Harvard key, which will give you access to the Harvard libraries and Canvas and other electronic resources. You won't, um, you'll have to activate it before your course starts, but you'll only have access to those materials during the time of your program. So if you're taking session one, it will be the first two weeks. If you're taking session two, um, etc. So you shouldn't have to do anything yet, but you will receive that Harvard key email uh, usually five days within five days of you registering for your class and just make sure that you claim your key before you need to get into Canvas, which is usually the first week of May when students want to look at their syllabus and, you know, purchase their textbooks or whatever. Thank you. Um, it looks like there was a bit of confusion on the family orientation slide. So my apologies for that misinformation, but definitely note that it's Sunday, not Saturday. Um, so just the Sunday before your session, that is when family orientation will be. Um, and it will be a very similar style to what you're experiencing tonight. So it will be a webinar style. And then, like I said, the three of us will be in the Zoom on call room following that session if you have questions that you want to ask face-to-face -face virtually. And in um, addition to the family orientation, the first day of our program, you'll also, students will also join their first community engagement. Community engagement is really a time for you to meet with your resident director and about 20 of your um, 
peers to really get to know them and to really do some team building and um, goal setting for your time here with us at Harvard. It's really a great opportunity for you to get to know some students who may not be in your course, but may be in the same time zone as you. Um, so you will definitely meet lots of other students. We'll do our best to make sure that you're not taking community engagement at, you know, in the middle of the night at your time. We are cognizant that people are taking our courses from all over the world. Yes, yeah, so you just answered <laughs> the second part of the next question I have. So great job, Dr. Newcomb. Um, but I think the first part of that question that a few students had were how do they gain access to the extra co-curricular sessions? When will that process happen? I'm gonna ask Ms. Gordon to answer that question. All right, so that was for the extra, uh, the extra yes. events. Um, so um, like we said earlier, about 10 days or so before you will sign up for events. And so we will give you about a week to sign up for those various events that you need to sign up for. So the one academic exploration program and the one college readiness workshop. So once that week is up, we will then be able to go through and see how many seats we have left in the different pro pro programs that we're offering. And so once that is done, we'll be able to um, come up with our other surveys for you all to then individually sign up for the events that you're interested in. And we will email you those um, during uh, probably uh, your first few days before and during uh, the start of the sessions. And so you will be emailed those and they will also be up on our website uh, once we are done with the initial registration period. Awesome, and I actually have another question for you, Ms. Gordon. Uh, students would like to know if they're taking multiple sessions, will their RD groups remain the same or will they change? Their RD group will actually uh, will change. Uh, if you're doing multiple sessions, you'll most likely be meeting with me uh, during one of the sessions. So I will become your interim RD for uh, your second or third session, whichever it may be. Yeah, just if we could elaborate on that, we didn't want you to do the same curriculum two sessions in a row. So just like you will take a new course, you will have a different um, community engagement if you come to more than one session. So you will meet a whole new group of students for each session. Thank you both. I am looking through the last of our questions that we have here. Um, a few students have questions about submitting homework assignments on time, late, forgetting those assignments. I know we've covered this before, but if we, if we just want to reiterate the importance of, of homework and class time assignments. Sure. So you should, you know, treat this course just like you would any other. Um, this is a college level course. It just happens to be taught for high school students, but it is taught by Harvard affiliated faculty, postdocs, advanced doctoral students, that everyone who's teaching you is Harvard, currently Harvard affiliated. You'll be doing a semester worth of college level work in just two weeks, so it is extraordinarily intensive. You should expect two to four hours of homework on top of your three hours of class every day. Um, your course will meet Monday through Friday for three hours, and then on the weekends you will also have homework to, um, to you know, complete outside of your course. Some of that could be done in group and others will be individual assignments. Um, it is our expectation that you are submitting everything uh, for your course in order to get a passing grade. Um, the syllabi for each course, which has very detailed, I've been, I've been approving syllabi all week, um, and I've gotten through about 50 of the 90 syllabi that I have to approve so far, um, but they all have very specific assignments or readings, presentations and papers that are due related to the course. And in order to get a passing grade, you need to successfully complete all of those assignments. In addition to your um, meets all requirements or requirements not met non-credit grade, you will receive a written evaluation on Harvard letterhead with a signature that we'll send to you or that you can actually log in and download as a PDF from our student portal. Um, you'll receive that about six weeks after your last course, but that will be a very specific evaluation related to how you performed in the course. So it is a way for our faculty to give you some direct feedback. So I would strongly recommend that you 
you do all of your assignments. The other piece that's really important about this program is that because it is so intensive, we require you to be at every class. We do not record any courses. Um, everything happens live um, as a webinar, uh, or, or actually it's a it's called live webinar, but it's actually a live Zoom class. Everyone is on camera the whole time. And because you're covering nearly a semester of work in just two weeks, we expect that you'll be at every class on time and not leave early. Um, in fact, our policy is if you're going to miss more than 15 minutes of any course, you will probably not pass for the semester so or for the session. So it's really important that you are dedicating your full attention to our program. We have a few questions coming in asking specifically about the pre-college fair and what that will look like virtually. Would you like to answer that question? Sure, I would be happy to. Um, so <laughs> last summer being our very first experience being virtual, we sort of shifted our typical pre-college uh, fair to a virtual set of sessions. So we will have sort of like a panel uh, similar to this webinar style. Typically on Fridays, they're still being scheduled. Representatives and admissions officers from different institutions and schools and universities will attend um, and sit in this webinar style, answer questions that you have for them and give a nice rundown of what their school is about and what it's like to be a student on their campus. Um, so that is happening, that is open across all sessions for students so that you can get information from schools that you're most interested in. So there is definitely still a fair opportunity for all of you this summer, even though we are virtual. Right, so those are virtual admission fairs for college admission and they happen on typically on Fridays during the summer. Um, and as Ms. Corbett said, because we don't have every um, you know, institution come to each one every Friday. It's usually about four to six institutions that are presenting. Um, we do open that for students in any session to attend. Um, regarding the pre-college virtual program fair that is this Saturday, that is an opportunity for you to learn about pre-college programs throughout the US and to actually chat one-on-one -on -one with one of our staff. So I think we'll wrap this up with our final set of questions here, but uh, we're still getting a few questions about co-curricular activities, where they can find them listed, when they'll be sent the email of when they can register. So if we just want to go over that, Ms. Gordon, one more time, um, and then we'll wrap up the webinar. Of course, I've been trying to get to some of those questions in the Q&A, uh, but um, you will receive an email about 10 days or so before your program from your resident director. And as you can see, Dr. Newcomb just put in our website, which I have been updating and will be continued to be update throughout, um, up leading up to our first session. Um, and so in that email from your RD about 10 days before your session begins, there will be a link there. And that link will take you to a sign up where you will sign up for your first initial um, academic exploration event, as well as your college readiness event. And so we will give students a full week to sign up for those. Um, and then once we are able to uh, see our list of registrants, we are able to then see what programs have extra spaces. Once we uh, know what those are, we will put those on our website and you'll be able to go on. Again, we will send this link multiple times. You will be on it constantly, um, but you'll go on there and you'll be able to sign up for more, um, for more programs that are, have available spaces. Um, and so please feel free to peruse that website. I can tell you the academic exploration events are all up to date. Everything else you'll see at the note at the top, they are in the process of being edited. So feel free to check that. Um, I'm on that constantly just trying to look at and, and create a great website for y'all to see all the great programs that you will be able to attend this, uh, this summer. 
And I'd just like to thank you once again for taking the time to, you know, check into this webinar. We have well over 400 people with us still, which is pretty amazing for a webinar attendant. So thank you for your kind attention. I just put in the chat the um, website specifically for admitted students to the Harvard Pre-College program. So feel free to check that out. We will post updates and um, the dates to register for events and other specific information only for admitted students in the pre-college program on that website. So feel free to check there often for new updates. Um, I would like to once again thank you and congratulate you on your acceptance into our 150th Harvard Summer School year um, and the seventh year of the Harvard pre-college program. On behalf of my colleagues, once again, thank you and have a wonderful night.